Hey guys, how's it going? This is Fixer Med. Welcome back to my high yield anatomy review series for the USMLE Step 1 NBME CBSE and NBME CAS examinations. This will be part 8 of my multi part video series providing a broad overview of the discipline of anatomy for these exams. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to start off by talking about the fibular collateral ligament, also known as the lateral collateral ligament. The fibular collateral ligament, also known as the lateral collateral ligament, is a rounded cord-like structure extending between the lateral epicondyle of the femur and the head of the fibula. Unlike some other ligaments, it does not merge with the joint capsule nor does it connect for to the lateral meniscus. Its primary function is to restrict excessive extension and adduction movements of the leg at the knee joint. And as you can see, this is the lateral collateral ligament and the other ligaments are located around the knee. Good visual representation of everything for you guys. Moving on. Next, we're gonna be talking about the rupture of the cruciate ligaments. In cases of cruciate ligament rupture, when the anterior cruciate ligament is ruptured, there can be excessive forward displacement of the tibia relative to the femur, leading to the manifestation of the anterior drawer sign. In the rare scenario of posterior cruciate ligament rupture, excessive backward di displacement of the tibia on the femur can occur, resulting in the posterior drawer sign. Moving on. Next, I'd like to talk about prepatellar bursa and suprapatellar bursa. A prepatellar bursa is located between the superficial surface of the patella and the skin. Uh, this bursa is susceptible to inflammation and swelling known as prepatellar bursitis. Then we have the suprapatellar bursa, which is positioned as a superior extension of the synovial cavity between the distal end of the femur and the quadriceps muscle and tendon. Uh, this bursa serves as a common site for intraarticular injections. Moving on, let's go ahead and do some questions. We have a 26 year old male who presents to the clinic with complaints of pain and instability in his right knee after a recent skiing accident. Physical examination reveals tenderness along the lateral aspect of the knee joint. Further assessment reveals a positive anterior drawer sign. Which of the following ligaments is most likely injured in this patient? All right, I think I gave you guys enough time here. If you need more time, please feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, moving on, moving on now. The fibular collateral ligament, also known as the lateral collateral ligament, extends between the lateral epicondyle of the femur and the head of the fibula. Injury to this ligament can result in instability of the knee joint, especially during activities that involve excessive extension and adduction movements. The positive anterior drawer sign indicating anterior displacement of the tibia relative to the femur is suggestive of injury to the fibular collateral ligament. Therefore, the correct answer is D, fibular collateral ligament, lateral collateral ligament. Let's see why the other answer choices are incorrect. The medial collateral ligament is located on the medial aspect of the knee joint and is typically injured with forces that produce valgus stress leading to medial knee instability. This patient's symptoms and positive anterior drawer signs suggest lateral rather than medial knee involvement. The anterior cruciate ligament stabilizes the knee joint against anterior translation of the tibia on the femur. While ACL injuries can also present with instability, the positive anterior drawer sign is more indicative of a fibular collateral ligament injury. The posterior cruciate ligament prevents Posterior translation of the tibia on the femur, injury to the PCL would result in a positive posterior drawer sign, which is not described in this patient's presentation. The patellar ligament connects to the patella to the tibia and is involved in knee extension. 
Injury to the patellar ligament typically presents with difficulty in knee extension and patellar tendon tenderness rather than the lateral knee tenderness and positive anterior drawer sign described in this case. Moving on to the next question. We have a 30 year old female that presents to the emergency department after a skiing accident with complaints of knee pain and instability. Physical examination reveals tenderness over the knee joint and a positive Lachman test. Which of the following ligaments is most likely injured in this patient? All right, I think I gave you guys enough time here. If you need more time, please feel free to pause the video. If not, moving on now. The anterior cruciate ligament stabilizes the knee joint against anterior translation of the tibia on the femur. Injury to the ACL can result in instability and a positive Lachman test, which indicates excessive forward displacement of the tibia relative to the femur. This manifestation aligns with the description provided in the question stem where excessive forward displacement of the tibia leads to the manifestation of the anterior drawer sign. Therefore, the correct answer is B, anterior cruciate ligament. Let's see why the other answer choices are incorrect. The medial collateral ligament is located on the medial aspect of the knee joint and provides stability against valgus stress, while MCL injuries can also present with knee instability. The positive Lachman test described in this patient suggests involvement of the ACL rather than the MCL. The posterior cruciate ligament prevents posterior translation of the tibia on the femur. Although PCL injuries can result in posterior instability, the positive Lachman test is more indicative of an ACL injury. The fibular collateral ligament, also known as the lateral collateral ligament, stabilizes the knee joint against varus stress. Injuries to this ligament typically present with lateral knee instability and a positive varus stress test rather than the anterior instability described in this case. Patellar ligament. The patellar ligament connects the patella to the tibia and is involved in knee extension. Injury to the patellar ligament typically presents with difficulty in knee extension and patellar tendon tenderness rather than the anterior instability and positive Lachman test described in this case. Moving on. All right, we have one more question. We have a 45 year old construction worker that presents with anterior knee pain and swelling. Physical examination reveals tenderness over the patella and a palpable mass just above it. Which of the following structures is most likely inflamed in this patient? All right, I think I gave you guys enough time here. Uh, moving on now, if you need more time, please feel free to pause the video. 
Prepatellar bursitis, characterized by inflammation of the prepatellar bursa, commonly presents with anterior knee pain and swelling. This bursa is located between the superficial surface of the patella and the skin, making it susceptible to inflammation, especially in individuals with occupations or activities that involve frequent kneeling. Therefore, the correct answer is C, prepatellar bursa. Let's go ahead and see why the other answer choices are incorrect. The medial meniscus is a fibrocartilaginous structure located within the knee joint. While meniscal injuries can cause knee pain and swelling, the presentation described in this case is more indicative of prepatellar bursitis. The anterior cruciate ligament, ACL, is a ligament within the knee joint that helps stabilize the joint during movements. ACL injuries typically present with instability and are not associated with localized anterior knee swelling or palpable masses. The quadriceps tendon attaches to the quadriceps muscle to the patella and is not typically involved in isolated anterior knee pain and swelling. The medial collateral ligament is located on the medial aspect of the knee joint and provides stability against valgus stress. While MCL injuries can cause medial knee pain and swelling, they are not associated with tenderness over the patella or palpable masses. Guys, this will do it all for today's video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Would really appreciate it if you guys could leave a like and subscribe if possible. And that's all I have for today. This is Fixer Med signing off. Be sure to have a great day and good luck studying, guys. Goodbye.